Hi, I'm Dr. Phil Kelly from the Liverpool Business School and in this video presentation I'm going to talk to you about how to create and deliver a postgraduate assessed business presentation. Not all presentations are the same and so you do have to think carefully about their purpose and this session is really geared up to talk about assessed presentations at the postgraduate level. So we'll explore how best to communicate content in a persuasive manner whilst demonstrating masterliness. There are many factors to consider when designing, creating and delivering an effective presentation for assessment at the postgraduate level. Let's outline a selection of key factors to consider and we will look at these in more detail throughout the presentation. The presentation will normally address a particular assignment task and you will need to articulate the purpose of the presentation. This is used to motivate the audience to sit up and listen. You will need to consider what to include in the presentation, the key points and messages which should reflect your learning throughout the course you are being assessed on. The presentation should be well structured and tailored to meet the needs of the audience. Good use of media can facilitate persuasive communication and it will be essential to prepare for the assessment task. Finally, when delivering your presentation, you will want to ensure you communicate well both verbally and non-verbally. We will discuss video presentations and using uh, feedback to develop your presentation competence. All of these things will be explored in more detail in the following slides. I've divided the presentation into the following main sections and we'll go through each of these in sequence next. Let's start by focusing on the presentation task and purpose. Normally your tutor will have allocated the task that requires you to create a business presentation that will be used for assessment purposes. Fundamentally, the assessment task will require you to demonstrate you have attained the course learning outcomes and the points in the assignment task. You will need to meet academic expectations for the presentation, demonstrate masterliness and appropriate use of theory from your course. In some cases, you will present as an individual and in other cases as a group. Be mindful of how marks are allocated and plan carefully around the time constraints. Be sure to analyse the assignment task carefully and use it to specify a purpose for your presentation. Let's consider some of the factors that might influence the content of your presentation. When thinking about the content of your presentation, you must view the presentation task as a way for you to demonstrate an application of theories introduced on your course. Often, you will need to demonstrate critical thinking and wider reading, applying this knowledge to the presentation task. You will need to strike the right balance between depth and coverage. You'll not be able to talk about everything that you have learned on the course but must selectively apply the more appropriate and important aspects that can be used to answer the question posed in any assignment task. At the postgraduate level, you'll need to include arguments in your presentation. In a business presentation, these will be often take the form of specific problems you have identified or recommendations developed as a solution to them. When reviewing your presentation, you should ask, what are your main arguments? and then ensure they are adequately supported. You may support arguments with primary data that has been analysed or with reference to citations from the literature. Think about what your main conclusion will be. What are the main points to be included and how much time should you spend on each? Again, from an academic standpoint, ensure that you include citations and references when any of your presentation has been inspired by something you have read. Avoid plagiarism by referencing properly. Let's recap 
on some of those key factors driving the content of your presentation. An ideal structure for a presentation includes the title, which introduces the topic of your presentation, you, and provides a brief description. This is followed by a welcoming and informative introduction. You will specify the purpose of the presentation and explain how the presentation will be delivered. This is followed by a coherent series of main points presented in a logical sequence as the content. And then there will be a lucid and purposeful conclusion. You should include reference slides and ensure they comply with the referencing system specified, such as Harvard. Remember to ensure that references demonstrate critical wide reading, support for arguments made through the presentation and demonstrate masterliness. Finally, you may wish to take questions from the audience. When working with a large PowerPoint presentation, you can create sections that can be collapsed and expanded, and this will help you keep slides organized and facilitate navigation. Next, we'll talk about the media used to deliver presentations and how to actually deliver them. Effective presenters take an audience-centered approach. It's extremely important to identify the audience and adapt your delivery to their interests, level of understanding, attitudes, and beliefs. In most business school presentations, you should cater for an audience containing both business practitioners and academics. Depending on the assignment task, you may be expected to apply your course knowledge to a particular case study as if you were operating within a business. Additionally, you must ensure aspects of your presentation meet the needs of the academic in the audience. You must try to satisfy both regardless of whether you are presenting to a panel, individual assessor or class. Ensure you understand the audience expectations and tailor your delivery accordingly. Use appropriate vocabulary, pitching at their level, whilst demonstrating what you know about your topic. Ensure that you keep their attention and are familiar with the room and equipment to be used. You'll be encouraged to use several different forms of communication media to get your message across with impact. Multimedia presentations go beyond the use of text and images. These presentations generally include animation, video, audio and lots more. Remember though, in an academic presentation, your job is not to entertain the audience, but demonstrate what you have learnt during a course. Use media carefully to help you communicate the key points in a memorable manner and as a general rule use minimal amounts of text on the slide. You are not creating an essay and it is you who should do the talking, not your slides. Perhaps the most common tool used to create student presentations is PowerPoint, though there are other tools to consider. Whilst you may make use of PowerPoint, you may also insert images, film clips and other kinds of media. However, be mindful that it should be your work rather than something you have simply copied and pasted into the presentation, as you are unlikely to get marks for simply copying and pasting. Impact is about having a strong effect on the audience. The use of visuals such as charts and drawings is critical to maintaining interest throughout the presentation. Pay particular attention to how you can enhance visual graphics and shorten text messages. In particular, you need to make a special impact in the first few minutes of your presentation. You will need to determine how many slides to use and there is no easy answer to this. What is important is that you ensure the audience has sufficient time to read and review any slide that you show to them. Do not rush through them. Otherwise, you may bombard the audience and they will struggle to remember any aspect of your presentation. In many ways, it is better to go for quality and depth rather than quantity and breadth of coverage. 
but you should be guided by the assessment task when deciding on this. In any event, ensure you number your slides as this will make it easier for an assessor to provide feedback to you. You should also think about the type of font you are using and its colour. Fonts influence readability, but also say something about you. Colour is associated with emotion. Ensure it is you who does the talking rather than relying on text on the slide. Slides should only support, not replace what you have to say. Remember, a picture paints a thousand words. It can also show your understanding of your or your application, of course, frameworks and models. Create your own diagrams rather than use excessive amounts of text on slides. In particular, try to apply models from your course, such as a drawing of an organisation chart, a business process map, or using problem solving tools such as demonstrating fishbone analysis or representing data in a chart. Whatever tools and frameworks have been taught on your course, you should try and find an opportunity to use them in your presentation. If you are using text on a slide, keep the number of words to an absolute minimum. There's no magical rule for this, but certainly avoid slides with more than 20 words or so. In order to do this, you should make use of bullet points and do not try to write as if you were writing an essay. Ensure that your slide is legible and can be read. Give the audience time to do this and ensure there are no typos. Finally, remember to demonstrate critical thinking and wider reading through citations. Once you have received your assignment task, you should prepare and get ready to deliver the presentation. There are quite a few things involved at this stage. And one of the first things you need to do really is analyze the assessment task carefully. Look exactly at what particular parts of the course are being referred to, how marks are being allocated, and various instructions about the time taken to deliver the presentation, whether it will be individual or group, and so on. The next task will be to conduct the research, do all of the critical wider reading, and this should be related to the syllabus for your module and any of the learning outcomes that are declared. You need to then plan the presentation, work out who's going to deliver what, what slides you're going to include, what will be on the slides, the different media, format and other things that we've talked about so far. So it's really about creating the slides. But you should plan plenty of time to go through various phases of reviewing slides, editing them, changing them and continuously improving them. This can be a long drawn out process if you want to get a good assessment score. You'll also need to prepare by understanding the format of delivery. Will it be a face to face presentation in a, a classroom, in which case you need to visit the room, ensure you're familiar with the technology, the room layout and projection and so on, so that you can work out the appropriate font sizes that can be read from the other side of the room. Finally, make sure you have a backup plan. This is particularly important if you're delivering a group presentation. What will you do if a particular group member doesn't turn up on the day or for some reason may not be able to continue with their contribution to the group presentation? So you need to make sure that you know what you'll do in those situations and you know who will take over what and that you've been sharing work as you go along. There are lots of things to consider when you are called to actually deliver your presentation. That is, when you stand up in front of your audience or the camera. These considerations will be dependent upon whether your presentation is to be conducted live or will be recorded. Before you appear before the audience or camera, you should consider any dress code. The way that you dress will impact upon the audience perception of you, so think carefully about it. It will rarely be appropriate to wear casual clothing for an assessed academic presentation, particularly when this is a business presentation. Throughout the presentation, you will need to communicate well and persuasively with your audience, and this will mean paying attention to both verbal and nonverbal communication factors. You should be seen as approachable and through the maintenance of good eye contact, ensure the audience feel that you are talking to them. From a non-verbal communication point of view, this will mean adopting a welcoming posture 
and ensuring there are no barriers between you and the audience. Focus on the audience and do not read your slides or notes, as this does not demonstrate your understanding of the topic. Avoid turning your back on the audience. With regard to verbal communication, you will need to talk at the correct pace, placing emphasis and varying tone in the right places. Pace is about how quickly you speak. Think about words per minute and aim for somewhere around 120. But don't forget, you will need pauses and to allow the audience time to think, as well as understand what you are saying. You should allow time for the audience to look at any diagrams or figures presented. Finally, convey enthusiasm, changing speed, occasionally to give emphasis. Ensure that you use the appropriate vocabulary for your audience. In an assessed postgraduate academic presentation, this will mean making the correct use of terminology as incorporated into your course. It is important to put some things into your own words, that is, paraphrase, but it's also important to use key concepts appropriately where you can. Allocate time according to topic importance, and think about how much time each individual should speak if you are delivering a group presentation. In the case of a group presentation, you should also consider how to integrate the presentation parts and how to link from one presenter to the next without fragmenting the presentation or confusing the audience. When you are not speaking, ensure that you don't distract the audience. Ensure the audience know when the presentation has finished. Thank them for listening and explain how you will deal with questions and your references. When dealing with questions, look confident and in control. This is an opportunity to lift your marks and ensure that you have achieved the purpose of the presentation. Finally, practice and rehearse. Allow several days for this. This is critically important in group presentations where you will need to come across as organized, coordinated and a team. In some cases, you may be required to submit a video recording of your presentation. Whilst there are many ways to do this, PowerPoint does provide several simple tools to help you. Click on the slideshow in the PowerPoint ribbon, then click Record Slideshow. You can add voice and a video image to your slide. This is what I have been doing throughout this presentation. You will of course need a camera to be attached with your computer to do this. Once you have recorded images and sound, you can then format them and reposition the image on the slides so that it doesn't cover any of the content of the slide or the slide number. Using video allows you to review and edit your slides until they're right. Allow plenty of time for this action. If possible, seek feedback from people who listen to your presentation. Maybe other group or class members or your tutor. The presentation should be drafted and redrafted multiple times if you want to get it right. Communication is a competence that can be continuously developed. Presentations are never perfect, and you can always improve them. However, you must do this under the constraints of time. Aside from using feedback, you should develop your presentation competence by reading widely about the topic, and I'll chat more about this later in the presentation. We have now come to the end of this video presentation, though there will be some slides reflecting on the presentation and talking about further reading and what more you can do to improve your presentation competence after this slide. In summary and conclusion, there are a number of points that we have talked about in this presentation and really a collection of things that, if you follow them, should help improve the competence of your presentation, but also the score that may be awarded in any assessment task. In particular, it's important to address the task itself. So that means answer the question, keep looking at what the task is and keep checking that you are actually working towards it. Make sure you come up with a good plan and follow the structure that was advocated in terms of a title slide, followed by an introduction, the main content, summary and conclusion, references and so on. Throughout your presentation, demonstrate masterliness, and this will often mean demonstrating critical wider reading and thinking, but also developing arguments and applying coursework theory to support anything that you say. All of this 
is also associated with learning uh, and demonstrating that you've attained the module learning outcomes and any presentation task or assessment task will be looking for you to do these at least in part. Throughout your presentation you need to consider the audience and this means tailoring the vocabulary that you use and the approach that you use and talking on their level to meet their expectations. Throughout you'll have to communicate well and this means both verbal and non-verbal communication and also the way that you use media and deliver your slides. Keep reworking your slides, keep working to get the content right, drafting and redrafting, keep critiquing your own work and moving it forward all the way up to the point of the presentation. You should allow some time once you've finished all of your slides where you practice the presentation and try to avoid any changes a few days before actually delivering the slides. And finally, keep thinking about using feedback from people in the group that you may be working with, your class or from your tutor to develop your presentation competence, but also a specific presentation that you have in mind. In the next slide, you'll be able to see the references for this presentation and then we'll reflect on the whole presentation. It is important for you to read more about delivering effective presentations and also developing your communication competence. I've suggested a couple of textbooks on this slide. There are also the references on the previous slides. And I've also attached three different videos that can help you understand a little bit more about associated topics of masterliness and assessment at the postgraduate level.